Hey, what is up everyone? It's me, Master Leaf, back to do a, another video and today I've got a special video where I'm going to demonstrate to you all how to do rig rushes. Now I've got two games here and I'm going to do my best to narrate the process of the rush and what you're supposed to do with it. Now it does depend on, on each of the matchups but this first game here will be a, a Skrin versus GDI match and I'm going to be Zocom in this particular game. Now like any game of Kane Draft you want to scout at the beginning of the match. You'll want to invest about three to four riflemen into scouting. Uh, if you're up against random then you have to do what I'm doing here which is scout the left flank the right flank and uh, you have to send one through the middle as well why is that leaf well because there's a chance of being rushed by disintegrators trial 59 and screen can rush you with a descent so you need to be on the ball you need to scout those areas just so you're not surprise rushed on the other hand if you are not against random and you know for instance that you're up against GDI then you don't have to do that you can just send a couple down the middle but there is a chance of you meeting a fox soul. so what I would suggest is maybe make a pit bull versus nod and GDI if you want to be really safe because GDI can do orca rushes and if they anti-scout you hard with riflemen then uh, you are at risk of losing the game to that. So I built an APC here. I wasn't uh, sure yet if I'm up against a disintegrator. It's quite unusual actually in this game here. Uh, maybe I wasn't sure. I just don't know why I did this. But yeah, nonetheless, I have an APC out. I think this may catch him by surprise. Of course, I, I do all sorts of unorthodox strategies. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest here if I decide to garrison this APC up and put an uh, engineer inside of it and attempt to take over my opponent's spike gear, which I'm doing just now. So I'm trying to make the best out of a bad situation because I made an APC when there was no infantry coming my way. So when, you, when you're doing this uh, rig rush, you need to have some supporting escorting units to go along with it and I usually build them on four harvesters so I build a pre tank and an APC just so I can uh, get my rig safely to the opponent's base without taking any damage. It's a little easier with steel towers because the MRT can repair the, the rig as it's um, damaged when moving. There's a bunch of seekers coming my way with a corruptor now this is panic so he is pretty unorthodox that corruptor is quite annoying because he's going to just repair his seekers up. Uh, APC taking a lot of damage, Harvester poised to go down, uh, this is our 19, so you're going to see the heavy damaged Rocket Harvester, which is not a thing in the vanilla game. Uh, one Harvester of mine does fall, I'm in a dire position here, I'm really struggling to fend off against these Seekers, which are relentlessly trying to kill my Harvesters, I do lose one of the Harvesters, one of them was pulled off of the line here, so... This is a pretty bad situation for me to be in. I've got this APC engineer. I was originally intending to go for the tip spike, but because uh, he is really focused on my base, I thought, hey, let's just try and take a refinery over. I did lose a harvester after all. I need to get myself some major damage dealt. This is a bit risky of me with this APC. Notice how I've got it on a whole fire stance, this APC. That's just so it doesn't uh, let my opponent know that there are, uh, is an APC there because it will start firing at the harvesters and that will alert him and he'll just sell off a building. Now unfortunately there he was able to detect that engineer so the APC engineer of mine does nothing. Now I'm on four harvesters. Like I said before, four harvesters is, is about where you want to start queuing units. If you're doing a rig rush, so I, I know people call it a rig rush, but it really is just a, a mid-game GDI push. I've got two APCs out and a Predator tank put down that mine drop just so I can salvage this APC. I mean, he could have chased it, but there was a risk of him losing his Seekers in the process. I've got a couple of rocket squads coming out. I built those to garrison my APCs just to give those two APCs there a little bit more firepower. Uh, pulling that one there that's really damaged back to base near the war factory. I need to be extremely cost effective in this match because I am on the back foot of course. I need to be more cost effective than my opponent. He is probably well ahead of me in this match. Rig about to come out. I'm queuing Zocom Walkers. I decide to sell my tier 2 off and call in the uh, V-35 transport. This transport port is my preferred scouting method. 
And I'm going to get that into his base with a waypoint. It is the fastest unit for GDI. And it reveals a lot of the map. Two Pred Tanks and an APC. Still, this is just giving my rig time to move into his base. It's going to also provide some nice repairs for my APCs and Pred Tanks. Look at this engagement here. Without this rig, I would simply not be able to defend those tanks off. So the Seeker's full. Uh, I see a bunch of Storm Riders being made. So that's going to immediately prompt me to queue in the Bloodhounds. Bloodhounds, very good in this case because I get two APCs. And I get two Pitbulls that are promoted to a veteran, both of which do fire at air. Rig has also an anti-air launcher, but it does bugger raw damage. But now I'm aware of the Storm Riders. So I'm going to make my way to his base with this rig, with these APCs. I need to try and also defend off against these Storm Riders, which are going to be in my base in mass very soon. Storm Rider there and a dev tank. Those Pitbulls need to be very careful. Now, it is not a charged up dev tank. And I unfortunately miss all of those dev tanks with the uh, orcas. And the rig is also back in behind. A uh, lot of micro required when you're doing this strategy. But if I can put it off in this game, then that's going to be great for me. Because I am basically playing from the worst of all situations. MCV taking some damage. Uh, if, you're, if you have an airfield and orca strikes ready to be... Use just call it an orca strike. You can kill the lightning spike off incredibly quickly. Zokom walkers ready again to unload another salvo, but I can't really move out because those storm riders are just preventing me from going in there. Five storm riders buying him time to get down eco and defend off against these storms. They're, act uh, they're actually really helpful for him against the uh, Zokom walkers. That rig is unable to be moved as well. So yeah, I'm a little bit uh, skeptical of my chances at this point. Those orcas. I need to get those back to base for rearming and for repairs. I do have the ceramic armor. You need that as Zocom. It increases the armor of your aircraft by quite a bit. Lots of pitbulls there. I'm actually pretty um, convinced I can take on those storm riders at this point. As long as I uh, leave them outside of the dev tank range, the rig can just about outrange the dev tanks. In fact, they have the same range, but the rig is really the the main damage dealer against those Devourer tanks. I'm, I'm focusing down the Dev tanks. He's microing them away from the Zokomorkas just so I don't kill them. But they dealt just enough damage for me to pop the Dev tank with that Pitbull Force. Two Dev tanks fall. The Storm Riders as well go down. And I have a refinery ready to drop. So yeah, that Storm Rider strategy that Panic did not quite working out there. The uh, It would have worked if I didn't have a lot of Pipples. Zoka Morkas, of course, are very difficult to stop, but the Plasma Missile Battery for Screen, the Static AA for Screen, is the way for Screen plays to shut this down and just sit in their base and build a lot of units. But Panic is a fun player, and I feel like these two games here are still a great showcase of this strategy. And the next one as well, you're going to see uh, an even better demonstration. But uh, for now, I'm still moving into this base. He has a fully established expansion tier 2 down. No war factory for him. Starts to place down the photon cannons. Those deal decent damage to vehicles. And those Okamorkas once more proving to be... Very good. Now, they can take out structures. Structures such as these photon cannons can fall as well to Zircom Orcas. Uh, I'm going to start focusing down this tier 2 just so I can deny him from getting a tier 3 if he's building one. Also, it'll stop him from building those plasma missile batteries, which is what I'm trying to achieve here. So I focus down that nerve center. That goes down. Just one photon cannon left. A bunch of units there for me. Summoning in those bloodhounds just to reinforce the front line. I'm just going to sit back there and wait. Uh, I'm in this commanding position. Getting my eco well established here. Lots of eco and harvesters for me. He's also got devourer tanks. So the game is still very much not over. He's also got his tip spike. So all things equal. He's probably harvested more. I mean you can see based on the map. That he's harvested more Tiberium compared to me. He's been on that expansion way longer than me. I did snipe the tier 2. But he rebuilt it. I wonder just how close he was to getting that uh, tier 3 before I sniped it. 
with those dev tanks out for him. He's got two photon cannons defending his drone ship. Rig still alive, still kicking. Those photon cannons can just snipe it down, but if he risks losing his dev tank if he sticks around, loses it anyways. Photon cannons getting focused down there and pulling back those APCs and units that are getting targeted to the rig for repair, trying to save my rig from taking any damage. And those dev tanks trying to fend this off. I'm putting pressure on. I don't want the scrim player to breathe because it's really difficult as Zocom contending with those tripods, contending with that hex pod without my own tech. Now I can at this point do what I want. Harvesting is still going. Um, I need to consider an expansion now because I'm running dry soon out of Tiberium. So when I would say when your field's about uh, two thirds the way harvested, you need to start thinking about expanding to another Tiberium field, which is what I'm doing here. I built an outpost. I'm going to make that uh, outpost expand in the expansion. Now, I, I wouldn't recommend outpost expansions if the map is contested, but since I uh, want to have a mini map and focus on this micro battle, I don't want to pack up my MCV and have no radar. That's why I do this. Now, a lot of players like to do multi MCV, but uh, here I decided against it. A ton of dev tanks out now. And I've got a mammoth tank as well, which is going to be really good. Rig uh, miraculously still alive, even though there's like 10 dev tanks there. And I'm, I'm getting the tungsten upgrade because I was really, for some reason, thinking there's going to be more aircraft coming my way. Uh, Devastator warships in particular were a concern of mine because Zocom have really good infantry and scrim players gravitate towards the, devs, the dev Devastators because those are very good against infantry for scrim. And zone raiders can't be crushed by phase gun walkers, so what they do, the scrim players, is they just get a bunch of devastators. And it helps them as well defend against the two MCV Sonic emitter push. I'm going to start getting some hurt down on this MCV of his. He doesn't have a gravity stabilizer, so I'm just going to focus this one down here as quick as possible. Drone ship does go down, and now the dev tanks are moving in. But that's a, a real death ball of units of mine there. There's even heroic rocket squads garrisoned up in those... But this rig is still going. Somehow it kills all of the dev tanks to remain. And I've got my expansion established there as well. And Panic just unable to thwart this attack. Could have gone for a load of the disintegrators. Could have done many things differently. But that was that. Despite me getting um, my harvester sniped in the start. Despite my storm and my Zircon walk is getting hard countered i was able to bring this match back with that rig rush now the thing i like about the rig rush is that it um, provides um, action throughout it's not at any point boring because there's always units and a lot of micro from the players forces your opponent also to go low eco as well and not get too greedy otherwise he'll lose to that strategy there so the rig coming through in that match and i want to show you all another game which i feel like you guys are going to enjoy so stick around because i've got one more coming up guys so let's get into that one all right guys and we are back to game number two which takes us to tournament highlands now this is another game where i want to take you step by step on how to do a rig rush so now Standard procedure on any map that has a Tiberium spike. You want to open up with a barracks to capture the tip spike with your engineers. And the purpose of there being spikes on the map is just to get people to build units early on. Because otherwise it's just eco and not much else happening. So this is also going to allow me to build a couple of riflemen to scout my opponent. Which is an important thing in RTS games as mentioned in that last game scouting is key i'm spreading out my units just so i don't get pushed but now this game i am aware of my opponent's faction so i'm making more informed choices on this match so i'm moving in with three rifles if i encounter anything i should be able to overwhelm it with these three squads no problem out this game i am zocom once more 
Zocom, not the best faction to do the rig rush with, but uh, it's, it's good to do it because you guys will see that if it works with Zocom, it will work with Steel Talons and GDI even better. Steel Talons, I believe, is the best for this because the MRT in the Titan is the best supporting unit for that strategy. MRTs also repair uh, battle bases and buildings as well, so you can repair with the repair tool and also with the rig, um, with the MRT repair drone that repairs vehicles for free. I'll make it up against Mark Duquesne. I tried to dig a foxhole here so I can try and uh, delay this Awaken squad from getting into my base. I do manage to put down that foxhole which is going to be great. It's going to mean that my MCV is not going to be under any threat of their being uh, delayed. MCV going to deploy. Now I deployed on one power plant. This is just because I had no resources during that time. So during that time I spent, uh, I, I took, I just packed my MCV up and moved it a little bit further to my expansion. But I never intended to expand anyways. This is just sort of a mind game to make my opponent think that I'm just playing standard here. A couple bikes for panic. So he went for a bike rush. So that's going to delay my, uh, my push, but I'm okay with that because he delayed his income and he didn't kill any of my harvesters. I still have four and two, a couple of pipples out for me as well. Uh, power plant, if that goes down, that's going to be quite annoying. Uh, he decides not to take it. Of course, he would take losses, and in this stage of the game, you want to keep your units alive the best you can. He can probably engage into two pipples with what he has, but he chose not to. Does pull back there. I start queuing my rig. Power plant getting repaired. I repair. Um, and I upgrade my fully um, health power plant because I don't want him to see the uh, power plant upgrade just yet. I don't know if he can see that. The fog of war does last a long time in this game. I do sell my MCV. Uh, this is a, an all-in basically for me, but not really in the sense that I can't get back into it because I can't just rebuild my MCV again if I uh, need to. So I sold my MCV. He does beacon that um, MCV cell, so he's well aware of what's coming. He has plenty of time to respond to this. Uh, it works even better when, when your opponent doesn't even know that it's coming. I start queuing Zoka Morkers. In R19, they are $1,300, so a little bit cheaper. Panic over there will be panicking. He's going to be needing to build a lot of units to fend this off. V35 heading to his spike with that engineer i'm going to drop it off at his type room spike deny his income and get some more income for myself third refinery gets established there for him lots of pitbulls for me and a rig so i've got established my offensive position in his expansion field he's going to be forced to sell off that refinery he doesn't lose the harvester but you'll get a nice sum back for that ref sale 700 dollars second orca there for me going to be helpful and since there's no defense near this MCV, I'm just going to go ahead and destroy it. Not before taking out this power plant, because I know that he can use that uh, to sell and get an Awakened Squad, and I don't want that to happen during an engagement. I quickly take out the power plant there. MCV starting to get focused down. As you can see, I've got lots of Pipples and APCs. I'm building Pipples predominantly for my War Factory because uh, they reinforce quicker to the front line compared to Pred Tanks, and they have good DPS generally versus structure, um, structures and vehicles. Now, I'm quite vulnerable to infantry. That's why I built a hammerhead. I, I need to make the choice whether or, or not to go for a bunch of uh, hammerheads or or orcas. Rig taking catastrophic damage there. Unfortunately, it got EMP'd by that power plant. So just as I mentioned before, these power plants can be uh, an issue when you're up against Mark Duquesne. Uh, versus not, this is an easier uh, thing to, to execute because there's no risk of being EMP'd in this stage of the game. Now what I could have done there was put down a couple of minefields on the retreat. But this is uh, heating up pretty quickly now. I start firing off these uh, Zocom uh, sonic shells on these tanks and I'm going to be forced back here. Panic with that uh, quick snipe of the battle base will cause problems. I'm starting to keep Pred tanks because... Against sheer Scorpion tanks, I need to go for my own armor. As you can see now, he's got that Dozer Blade upgrade, which does give Scorpion tanks in R19 a considerable boost as far as armor is concerned. It's now a 25% increase as opposed to 15% before. Still got those Zocom Walkers. I'm building more of them. Zocom Walkers and Pred Tanks is the name of the game for me. I've got Triple Spike, and I believe I'm trading okay, but yeah, he's 
really uh, changing the equation now. I'm losing a lot of my APCs and pit bulls. Uh, this is pretty costly for me, but I'm just buying myself some time to get some Pred tanks out so I can take a better engagement. I've got five tanks now on the front line. A lot of those Scorpion tanks are damaged. I've got some ammunition left in those Orcas. Still trying to find a good juicy shot. And it's forcing him to uh, pull his forces away from the front line. As you can see, when I've still got Orcas flying around, he's scattering them, his army. He's control xing his army, scattering it, and that means that all of his tanks are not shooting mine. So I'm able to take a really good engagement there with my Pred tanks. So it's Pred tanks versus Scorpion tanks, two war factory versus two war factory, and it's going to be Zircom versus Mark Decane. Let's see how this goes. Now, this is a better situation now than it would have been back in the day because of those Dozer blades. But I've got the cheaper Zircom orcas to offset that. Pred tanks moving in pretty tight. Pred tanks barely able to withstand that attack. Now, he's got that war factory repair and I don't have any frontline repair of my own so what I've done here is I built a rig a second rig not for rushing with like I did in the start to kill my opponent's eco but just to heal up my pred tanks because you can see I've got a couple of my own tanks there which are uh, ripe for destroying with one or two tanks of his nice kill there so I'm hoping to get some nice damage dealt on his army. There's a ton of Scorpion tanks. If I just march in there, I'm going to lose all of my stuff. So I need to be very careful, uh, hoping to get some nice splash damage dealt with my Zircon Walkers. So the rig is pushing up this ramp. Unfortunately, he can't deploy there, but he didn't capitalize on that. And now my rig is deployed. He's gonna be forced to um, engage into this. Those harvesters are more of a nuisance because they're just tanking shots instead of uh, me want to destroy them. It's really the army that I need to destroy here, not the harvesters. So yeah, once again, he uses that scatter move, which is going to allow my tanks to uh, get some nice shots off on his. And I'm going to trade a little bit better there. Aim goes down on that. Uh, Orcas get some nice damage dealt there. I don't know if I dealt enough. I've got several tanks left. Those tanks are pretty low on health. I'm focusing the tanks down that are on the low health just so I can reduce the uh, firepower of his as much as possible just so I can maybe get the most out of this engagement here. Pulling the tank back that is in the really low health. This is a very intense tank v tank fight. And there's five tanks left there. Harvester's now long leeching Tiberium for both of us. There's blue Tiberium, which I'm pretty sure he's been harvesting. I haven't. This fight is definitely not over yet. As you can see, I've only got five tanks there. He's got a war factory repair advantage, so I can't push in. I, I've got several of my tanks there that are wounded. I need to get those back to a base, especially in such a low eco game like this. Every unit counts. I've got triple Tiberium Spike, which I think is the main thing at this point in time. As long as I'm cost effective and not throwing away my army, I think that triple Spike income is going to give me the edge. But I'm pushing in. Trying to get these uh, Scorpion tanks. He's microing very well. Does avoid the majority of the damage. Uh, lots of tanks there for me. Uh, a couple Shadow tanks in this point in time would be very good. I can get some multi-shots with those Shadowers. And even the Overload Beam as well uh, can almost one-shot kill Scorpion tanks. Rig moving in and once more this is this is the sort of games that I like where the both players are on edge and one mistake can uh, turn the ties very quickly. I mean if I lose this army here I'm basically dead. That's the state at which I'm in at the moment and this rig may actually save my army because I wouldn't have been able to retreat this back to my base. And there's an elite tank there which I'm trying to focus down. If that goes heroic that's going to be absolutely insane. It is probably going to be the game if I let that one go heroic. I'm going to just sit here and just cap for a moment while I get some repairs on these tanks. It's cheaper getting repairs than it is rebuilding these Scorpion tanks. Plus they have more chance of going and promoting up, which will make them more effective combat units. Brig and Pred tanks once more heading out for the attack. He hasn't had time to get down. Uh, an MCV for barracks to train and awaken squads to EMP this force but I'm once again making my way up this ramp hammerhead coming in here just so I can kill any awakened that he has because I noticed in the last couple of fights he's been using those awakened to great effect I'm trying to kite these forces by reverse moving no reverse move bugs happening for either one of us 
Rick there getting some nice shots off on these tanks. And the tank army numbers are getting very thin now for Panic. He doesn't really have enough anymore to deal with this uh, pre-tank army. It's only going to be a matter of time before he gets overwhelmed by this. As you can see, he just doesn't have an army here. Not sure where the rest of his tanks are. He's got several bikes trying to harass my harvesters, but that's not really a concern of mine. Because like, I'm in this base here with like 12 tanks. And even those Zirko Morkas are still rearmed, ready to go. Rig moving in. A couple of those tanks also promoted to Veteran. And I do think there's been a game which has been this focused on tank v tank fights in Kane's Wrath in such a long time. So especially between the two main factions, GDI and Nod. So yeah, that was a really fun game there. Arguably better than the first game, but yeah, I think that was a great example of how a rig rush works and how you can adapt to various situations. So I hope you all guys you guys enjoyed that one there and i will catch you later and if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to get, leave me a like and subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't already just so you stay notified of when i'm uploading things next so this is gonna be me guys peace out